we're having oatmeal for breakfast this morning and I put cinnamon, maple syrup, and succinate in mine. The kids really like it that way. It gives it a good sweetness to it, but it's it's not a lot of sweeteners that I don't really want them to have. And then I add two to three eggs to mine because Leland and Anna, whenever I make oatmeal for some reason, they just want just the oatmeal. They won't eat anything else with it. Now Wyatt, he will eat oatmeal and still have eggs on the side. And that's still on some days. But Leland and Anna, for the most part, they just want just the oatmeal. And so I feel like they're missing out on some nutrients or especially some protein for that being breakfast. And so I add the eggs in there and I mix them up really, really good. You have to mix them up really fast and thoroughly whenever you're adding the eggs to the warm oatmeal. Because if you don't mix them fast enough, it'll actually make it to where it makes scrambled eggs inside of the oatmeal. And they won't eat it if they see that either. So I mix it up really fast and it incorporates it really good, makes it nice and silky. And that way they're getting protein in their oatmeal if that's all that they're going to eat for breakfast. While the kids are eating breakfast, I am going to make some sandwich bread. And I am going to do a video where I can focus on this a little bit more and get more of the details with it. But here, it's just going to show me adding two teaspoons of the active dry yeast to the bowl. I do have one and a third cup of filtered water warming up on the stove just long enough to get warm while I put these other things in the bowl together. In the bowl with the yeast, I'm going to add a tablespoon of raw honey and two tablespoons of butter. You can add more or less honey and butter if you want to. Play around with it. Do what you like. Here I measured out the water. I made sure it wasn't too warm. You want it to be warm to the touch, kind of like you want with a baby bottle, but not too warm because if it's too warm, it will actually kill the yeast. Now, when I make my breads, I do use a scale because it does give me a more consistent outcome uh, once everything is baked up. So here I'm using einkorn, so um, I'm going to measure that out and then I am going to add a little bit of the all-purpose flour to it. If this is your first time making bread or you're still not super comfortable with making bread, I suggest using all all-purpose flour. And that measurement would be 420 grams if you're doing all-purpose flour. If you are mixing it like me, the grams do change a little bit when you start using that fresh brown flour. But that's a whole a whole other thing that we'll probably cover in the video that I do designated just for this sandwich bread. After you add the flour, you want to add six grams of the salt and then one egg. I actually do not have an egg in the house on this day. Um, do have chickens, but I, I, after our little attack from the dog, I only have two laying hens left, so I don't get that many eggs in a day. But I did have some egg whites in the refrigerator left over from when I made some ice cream because when you make ice cream, you separate the egg yolks and the egg whites. So I do add a few tablespoons of egg whites into it. And this does still work. If you see here, it does still make a dough. Um, that's exactly what you're wanting to see when you are mixing your dough. You want it pulling away from the sides. You want it making that ball. Um, and that, I mean, you're, when you start mixing your dough, you're going to think that, you know, you did something wrong. It's not going to come together at first. But I got my dough looking that way probably after about 15, 20 minutes of mixing. And the longer that you have it mixing, the more the gluten gets formed. And that gluten is what really helps your dough rise. So don't, don't be afraid to let it mix for 15, 20 minutes. A lot of the times when it looks like your dough's not coming together, it's just because it needs to be mixed a little longer. Now here, Wyatt is helping me get some apples peeled, cored, and chopped up and put in the pot so we can start making some applesauce. I had apples left over from a 20-pound box that I had gotten and uh, just needed to do something with them. So I did get that on the stove. I have it on low. It's going to simmer on low all day long while it cooks everything down. You can't see here, I forgot completely about the camera, so the camera angle is pretty bad. But I do have some coconut oil. And I got my two cast iron loaf pans out. You don't have to use cast iron. You can use any loaf pan that you have. I just prefer my cast iron. And I'm uh, greasing the cast iron pans with the coconut oil. 
I prefer using coconut oil. Um, we like the flavor of it on the bread and I, I just, I like how it works for me, but you can use any, any fats that you have that you prefer to use. So I did split the dough in half there before I formed my um, dough logs, but you can leave the dough, just do all one loaf with just that, that one piece of dough. It just makes a really tall, big, fluffy loaf. And so I do separate it, so it kind of gives me two medium-sized loaves, but it lasts us a couple of days when I do it that way, and it, it turns out fine. You'll see it in a little bit. They don't get quite as um, as risen up, and that's because on this day I use the egg whites instead of the entire egg, but it still comes out fine, and I do like having the two medium-sized loaves. So I'm going to form them. You want to make sure when you're forming them that you're folding things towards the back or towards what's going to be underneath on the bottom of the loaf pan. And so you have a nice good dome on the top. You want that dome on the top of the loaves to be nice and firm and round and clean. And that's going to give you a nice surface on top whenever the dough rises in the oven. So I'm putting it on top of my stove here. It is next to my pot, which is on low simmer, so it has heat from that. And then I preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So while the oven's preheating, it's going to have the heat from that to rise a little bit more and rest in the loaf pans before I put it in the oven. And I do cover it with some kind of cloth to make sure that none of the flies and other bugs and stuff will get in it. So now that my oven is preheated, it is going in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Make sure you set that timer because these will get firm quick if you, if you over bake them. <laughs> They're still good, but it does get pretty firm. Alright, 30 minutes is up. My alarm's gone off. So I do take out a uh, cooling rack. I was going to say drying rack. That's not a drying rack. I do take out a cooling rack, and when I take my loaves out, I dump them straight on the cooling rack to finish cooling. I don't let them cool in the pans. I have let them cool in the pans before. I didn't like the flavor. It tasted like cast iron on the outside of the bread. And then it does, it does make them a little different on the inside. So I'm thinking it just makes them cook a little too much. Um, but I do let them cool on the cooling rack. You want them to cool at least 15-20 minutes before you cut into them. If you cut into bread that you freshly baked right out of the oven too soon, it can be a little bit of a gooey texture. And so as long as you're letting it sit and cool for, I say minimum 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes is better. It gives it that nice bread texture and keeps it from being too gooey. Okay, so everybody wanted to go down for a nap today, which was great for me. They went down pretty early, and the night before did get down in the 30s, and I was kind of concerned about our sweet potatoes that I really was kind of late on harvesting. And so I covered them with the frost fabric trying to protect them. I do keep um, pine straw in the flower bed, a good layer of pine straw, and so it probably would have protected the sweet potatoes fine from that cold temperatures, but I do have a lot of larger sweet potatoes kind of at the surface of the soil, and so I put that frost fabric on it just for an added layer of protection because I was kind of nervous about it. But this next coming night, we're going to be in our 20s, so I knew that I had to get out there on this day to go ahead and get those taken care of because I didn't want to be worrying about them all night long. So you see here, we did have a pretty good harvest. I did end up filling this whole wheelbarrow up. And um, they're pretty good sized sweet potatoes. The sweet potato harvest last year, we got quite a bit of sweet potatoes, but they were on the smaller side. So we didn't really have any good roasting potatoes, or if I wanted to make a sweet potato pie, I went through qu quite a bit of them because they were just, they were so small. But this year, the sweet potatoes were nice and big and um, excited to be able to use them. It was nice for me on this day too because even though the boys love helping me do this and I felt bad because they were disappointed that I did this without them whenever they found out, I, I did. I felt really bad. But it was nice that I kind of had some quiet alone time to be able to just get this done and handle it 
I did have the cats all around me, but that was okay. It was it was nice to just just have something I could get done by myself. Okay, so we're here at the evening. This is probably five five thirty in the evening. The applesauce has cooked down, gotten nice and soft, the texture that we like it. So I'm getting this canned up really quick. Everybody's in a good mood. They're still letting me get things done. And so I'm just getting it jarred and canned up real quick in the water bath canner and um, before I start dinner. Because I need all of this cleared off of my stove top so I can start dinner. And this, you're like, that's not a water bath canner. Canner. Well, I mean, it, it's not like labeled a water bath canner. That is actually my large stock pot. And the, it, any kind of stock pot you have can be used as a water bath canner as long as you keep have something in it to keep the jars from touching the very bottom. So I do have a thing in there that I actually got out of my instant pot um, where you it has like the little silver gray thing where you can sit the chicken on and I put it in there to so my jars don't touch the bottom and um, it, it works fine as a water bath canner the lid is really light I do wish I had a heavier lid but it still works just fine gets the job done Anna <clears throat> sorry Anna fell off the slide so she's okay she's just <laughs> she hit her chin so it was just hurting a little bit but she stops crying quickly and every everybody's okay so anyways, I finish this up, get dinner started, and then off to bed we go. So thank you for watching this video, and we will see you on another one soon.